Good afternoon, Malacanang Press Corps. Kasama na po natin ngayon si Chief Presidential Legal Counsel and Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Salvador Panelo. Any statement, sir? Good afternoon, MPC. The palace welcomes as it respects the decision rendered by Judge Jocelyn Solis Reyes of Branch 221 of the Regional Trial Court of Quezon City on the decade-long case where 58 individuals, 32 of whom were media workers, were assassinated in Ampatuan, Maguindanao, last November 23, 2009. The court has spoken and rendered its decision on the basis of evidence presented by both the prosecution and the defense. There were verdicts of guilty and of acquittal. It behooves the parties to respect them. There are those who view the judgments as justice having prevailed. There are others who have contrary views. Those who disagree with the judgments of the court have legal remedies under their disposal. Ultimately, it will be the Supreme Court that will give the final judgment. For now, what is important is that the rule of law has prevailed. We reiterate that the participation of the executive branch, considering that the case was pending for adjudication before another independent branch of the government, the judiciary, is defined by virtue of the principle of separation of powers with regard to the suit. Despite the aforesaid, we wish to command to commend our executive officials who were either involved in the case as prosecutors or were heavily interested in its outcome as protectors of press freedom and human rights for ensuring that the propriety and the integrity of the proceedings were upheld. The Maguindano Massacre marks a dark chapter in recent Philippine history that represents merciless disregard for the sacredness of human life, as well as the violent suppression of press freedom. This savage affront to human rights should never have a duplication in this country's history. The incident is one of the factors that prompted the president to anchor his presidency on the preservation and maintenance of law and order in the entire country. With utmost regard to the right of press freedom, the president issued his first administrative order, administrative order number one, series of 2016, which sought the protection of members of the media from any act of violence, threat, or intimidation by, among others, creating the Presidential Task Force on Media Security. While the promulgation of judgment on the case is done, the narrative on the protection of media workers, however, is far from over. The President the whole of government see this as a constant trial and is therefore still hard at work in building a nation where wanton acts of violence can be prevented so that any intention to threaten our democracy will not prosper even at its inception. The chief executive assures us of his absolute obedience to the constitutional command to serve and to protect the Filipino people, even at the sacrifice of his life, liberty, and honor. Okay, question, MBC. Yes, Joseph. Sir, so what does it say about uh, uh, the government's uh, protection of the press freedom, sir? Does it have any implication? What does, what does it show in terms of impunity and those kinds of stuff? Well, it means that the government, and for that matter, any government, will have to do its utmost to protect those who not only uphold press freedom, but exercise the same. 
follow up or other questions? Uh, yes, Pia. And, and then Joyce after. Sir, what was the president's reaction to the decision of the QCRDC? I haven't talked to him. I don't know if he's already awake by the time because that is sleeping time. So, hindi po inabangan ni presidente yung promulgation? Uh, you know, sleeping time, you know, can he? Last night, we were so late again. He was so tired. I, I noticed him. He was very tired because there was three events. And past midnight na naman kami natapos. <clears throat> Pero despite this, sir, um, how do you think the president, um, or how does the president regard itong uh, araw na ito, how historic this well, day as is? Well, uh, you said in the statement, he welcomes that decision. Well, you know, what is important to this president, being a lawyer, is that the rule of law will always prevail. We cannot be ruled by a lynch mob. Next, Joyce. Sir, how will this contribute to the legacy of the president, knowing that the decision was handed down during his term? How will it what? contribute to the legacy that he will leave behind? Well, you know, I don't know about that. As I said earlier, there are, this is a different branch that acted on the case. And as we are want on repeating, that's, this president never interferes with any of the co-equal branch of government. What is important to him is whatever constitutional task is given to every branch, any of the three branches, will have to be obeyed. And as far as he's concerned, the command of the Constitution to him to serve and to protect the people, he will always <coughs> follow, not only to the letter, but even at the risk and sacrifice of his life, liberty, and honor, as he repeatedly says in every opportunity he has to the Filipino people. Next, Julie. Uh, when we discussed this Magindano Massacre promulgation, I think last Tuesday, you said that you have not talked about the pending promulgation with the president at the no, time. We, we didn't but talk. then yesterday, were we able to discuss uh, the scheduled promulgation today? No, we, what was discussed was the water issue. Um, sir, um, can we have can we have like a gauge of how how we interested will, I will ask him. the president is in his? In I'll his ask him when we meet today. Before, you know, Mayor Pasha Davao, when it happened, are you aware kung, kung ano yung level of interest niya sa maganda ng massacre ng Mayor pa lang siya? I, I don't remember we talking about it. Thank you, sir. Okay, other matters? Yeah, uh, follow up, please. Secretary, mm. just curious, as a former council of the Ampatuans, uh, what are your thoughts? Just curious about that. What no, are your thoughts said, about this As school? I said in the previous hearing, whatever I say might be misinterpreted or maybe given, so I'd rather not. Briefing, you mean? I, I just let, as I said, the court has decided and we have to respect. Uh, I think there are statements from the other side saying they're planning to appeal yung ruling. Well, the remedies, as I said in my statement, are all available to all of them. So in all cases, those who disagree will have to raise that before our higher courts. And okay. ultimately, it's the Supreme Court that will have to render the final judgment. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Other matters? Joseph. Sir, you mentioned something about you guys discussing the water concessionaire agreements last night. Yes. Any updates? Any announcements? Still the same uh, position he made earlier. Uh, will there be a meeting or talagang wala na yan, sir, with executives? Last night, I think he repeated that he still want to talk with uh, those who involved, the lawyers, 
of the government, the private lawyers. He said, I, I still want to hear why they allowed this kind of treason against the interests of the Filipino people. And these are the government lawyers, the senators who- Private the lawyers. Private lawyers. Whoever were involved during those times, at the time. What are company officials, sir? With the people involved, all the people involved. So he is. He wants to meet with the executives of Manila and Manila Water. Well, I just said I'm here once, but I said I want to know the reason why they allow this kind of provisions. Okay, you said you're going to some, announce something. Sabi niya, he will either rise or fall with this issue. Ini ulit niya. Yeah, ano yano si Sir Sir Six? Sabi niya, sabi niya, hindi siya papayag na walang mangyari sa kaso nito. When he says that, what, do you mean? what does he mean? Uh, yeah. Let's wait. He said he will make an important announcement on January 6. But that announcement is ready already. No? You're just waiting for I January 6. Siguro hindi discuss pa sa cabinet. Announcement regarding Whatever, the... whatever. Uh, regarding the water issue. Uh, okay. Follow up, is. Sec, when the president said he will he he will rise or fall with regard to the water issue what did he exactly mean by that uh, what i actually th those are my words okay. will rise and fall <laughs> okay Ma, okay ang parang pagsasabi niya i do not know whether i will survive this but i will not allow this to happen parang yan sabi niya i think what he meant is he will not step out of the presidency without resolving this issue. Will the meeting with the company officials and state lawyers involved in the water concession deals happen before January 6? I don't know. That I do not know. Because he, he plans to make an announcement on January 6, so hindi ba parang mas logical yung usapan bago yun? I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not sure of that. But can you give us a general picture of what he will say? At least, yung, is it about yeah, contracts? Yeah. Is it about I think uh, you can be assured that the stand of the president remains unchanged. Will it be a major policy shift? Huh? Will it be a major policy shift or rescinding contracts or what? Uh, let's, uh, I will not preempt the president because I asked permission to issue something. Yeah. Okay. Salamat, Sek. Other questions? Yes, Pia. Sir, during the President's speech uh, sa AFP anniversary no uh, Tuesday, the President lumped the New People's Army with the Abu Sayyaf group and other terrorists. And he also ordered the soldiers to crush the NPA para matapos na problema ng mga Pilipino. So, does that mean that the government will no longer pursue peace talks with the uh, communist group? Not necessarily, because the president, as uh, we always hear him, he, is, he always leaves a space, the window ajar for any peace negotiation with them. But he will not allow the attacks, the assaults against our forces. That is why if they attempt to do that, the order is to crush them. So, Toloy Parin, sir, what is the status of our efforts to revive peace talks with well, the CPP According to Joma Sijan, if it's here, he, he doesn't want it. But as far as we're concerned, if you're sincere, venue is not important. Sir, the government has been questioning the sincerity of the CPP NPA into going to peace talks with the government. Itong sinabi ni Presidente to crush the NPA as well as yung mga iba pang mga kalaban ng gobyerno. What does it say about the sincerity of the government into negotiating with the well, communist groups? The sir? President is, well, has always been sincere. He always opens talks. But the problem with the other side is they keep on attacking our forces. So you cannot be standing, sitting idly and watch them terrorize or kill our own people. 
Pero despite that, ako yung open pa rin kung gusto niyo pag-usap. Pag-usap tayo. Thank you, sir. Okay. Next question. A follow-up. Wax. Uh, wala pa sir. Sir, uh, follow-up lang dun sa question. Mm. Uh, how about sa unilateral ceasefire with the red, sir? Uh, Nakapagbigay na ba ang AFP ng ng ano kay Pangulo kung may well, um, ceasefire? Well, as far as I know, ayaw nila. Uh, wala ang ceasefire with the red, sir? Meron na silang statement na ayaw nila ng unilateral ceasefire. So that's be, that will be followed by the President, sir? Uh, in Dubai, usually he follows the recommendation of the people on the ground. He has not made any comment on that, so I suppose. Will he be giving an official declaration, sir? The I'll ask him. Okay, thank you, sir. Other questions, MPC? Yes, Joyce. Sir, baka lang po may comment kayo. Isang documentary ng Nat Geo ang na-shortlist sa Oscars and it tackles about the war on drugs. Sir, yung excerpt nung, excerpt nung um, synopsis, uh, it covers both sides of the conflict. Nightcrawlers reveals a harrowing twist behind Duterte's deadly crusade. Mm. It's about what they tag as the deadly crusade of President Duterte. Shortlisted so Oscars. As, as Oscars? Yes, sir. Well, it's an independent body of international experts on cinematic field. Yeah, so we'd rather not. In other words, it's not our turf. They let them judge on the base of whatever standards or guidelines they have imposed on them. Thank you, sir. Yes, Judy, follow up. Or other question. Mike, please. Sir, the documentary is about the president's drug war and it's about photo photographers and journalists following the drug war at night. Basically, yung mga napapatay. Given that it's been shortlisted for the Oscars, um, how does the palace feel about this? Does it mean that credible yung whatever claims are made in the documentary? Or are you okay with it being shortlisted in an international body? I think the judgment on a particular movie or film is based on certain criteria. Not necessarily the truth. It's how you depict how, how the producers do their films. Iba naman ang, di ba, pareho rin niya, eh, gaya ng mga fiction. <laughs> May nananalo, hindi naman totoo. So I don't think there's something, it has any relevance. You're not bothered at all? Eh, Oscar, eh, it's a movie yun eh. Meron din tayong docu, di ba? We have our own docu. For all we know, baka makapasok din yun pag hindi nilabas. Other questions? Yes, Prince? Sir, good morning. Mm -hmm. Sir, can I just get your reaction to the PCIJ article, sir, on the President Sal N? The article read, Cabinet officials interviewed by PCIJ say, that it would have been best if the president had agreed to release his 2018 Salen. Quote, the optics are really bad, unquote, says one official. Quote, the negative perception will be there that perhaps he is hiding something, unquote. The problem is na pikon ata. Another official agrees that the president's refusal to release his Salen could indeed be misconstrued as giving the lie to his own FOI edict. I think that Issues have been raised during the last press briefing, and I've already responded to them. Sir, and I will not repeat them. Is there a need for a loyalty check, sir, on the president's cabinet? I said I will not repeat what I said. I have responded to those queries earlier. Thank you, sir. Other question? Other issue? Uh, yes, Nestor. Second, uh, may I just have your reaction? The U.S. House of Representatives has formally impeached President Donald Trump on charges that he abused the power of his office for his political advantage. In the same way that we react on any intrusion into the processes of our government, we'd rather not make any comment on that. 
other than saying that in the same way that impeachment in this country is decided on the basis of party affiliations, eh, siguro ganun din sila. Thank you, sir. Follow up, other issue. Other issue. Yes. Kathy. Sir, can, can we get the palace's reaction on a pre-election survey showing that the Davao City Mayor Saro Duterte and President Duterte emerged as the top bets for President and Vice President po for the Visayas and Mindanao voters in 2020. So, ano pong... I'm not surprised. That has been done before in the city of Davao when both of them run as mayor and vice mayor. But sir, is the president willing to run again for another national post? Whether he wants to run again, that's his call. But that has been the emerging idea. Among, amongst people that it should, there should be a Duterte-Duterte tandem in the next presidential elections. The, the president is not <clears throat> prohibited from running as vice president. But is, there, is the president aware of this uh, Duterte-Duterte tandem for 2020 elections? I told him last night, and he smiled. So is there a possibility na uh, pakinggan niya yung clamor of the people well, to run again? If you speak of possibilities, then it's limit, <laughs> limitless. Lahat pwede. Pwede lahat yan. Okay. Next question, uh, Wax. A follow-up first. <coughs> Sir, pero di ba laging sinasabi ni Pangulo, pagod na siya, gusto na niya magpahinga. So, uh, and di ba noon, ayaw din niya tumakbong presidente. So therefore, sir, even if pagod oh, na siya. So depende siguro. <laughs> if, the, the, if circumstances require him to run, he might. He might brush off his pagod. He know? might. <laughs> he might. Eh, dati na nga siyang pagod, di ba? Nung tumakbong siya, ayaw niya na eh. Ang dami niya nakareklamo eh. Sir, pwedeng pakibuo lang natin yung statement no, no. na even if he's complaining that he starred, he, he's, he's not gonna stay in a minute let, longer. Let me put it this way. Okay. Election is very far from his mind. Running for any office is far-fetched. At this time. His focus on his constitutional duty to serve and to protect the people until the day of his term, he will do it with passion, with dedication and no force on earth or organizations or persons can stop or impede him from doing such tasks assigned to him by the Constitution. But even if elections are far from his mind at this point, what circumstances might push him to run for vice president with oh, his the, daughter? Those are speculations, so we will not respond to speculative queries. Follow up, other issue, Wax. Uh, sec, yung ano, na, last time na tanong ka namin about yung uh, plans to President for the holidays. Oh, I saw na, niya, he will just be with his family, with his grandchildren, as he usually do. Will he be working sa 24, 25, or bahay lang po raw siya? Eh, siguro. Diba last time, ganun din ang ginawa niya. Minimalabas mga pictures, nilalaro niya lang yung mga apo niya. Siguro ganun din. Okay. No more questions, MPC. Thank you very much, Secretary Salvador Panero. Balik po tayo sa Radio Pilipinas at People's Television Network.